Often when you have these applications for composers' residencies or schemes, they're very specific. Um, and whilst those can be really amazing opportunities, they don't often give the composer a chance, as much scope to shape what the project will be. Um, whereas Pathways did have that, um, so that's why I applied. Very often the commissions that I've um, received for practical reasons have been um, for works of a short duration. Um, so a kind of typical between five to ten minutes. But I would like to try on something um, a bit more larger scale than that. So working with slightly longer durations um, and dealing with large scale structure. And the second thing is working for larger, larger forces because I it's very hard, and I'm sure there are lots of composers that can identify with this, um, it's very hard to find opportunities to write for orchestra. Um, there are sort of particular schemes that you can go down or you can try and create your own opportunities. Um, but on the whole, it's hard to, you need to have experience in order to get a commission. Um, and it's one of those circular things, if you don't have the experience, then you're less, less likely to get commissions. I mean, it's the, the writing of the music is important, but there's lots of other things that come come with working with with big organizations or ensembles like an orchestra that I'd like to get experience with so you shape the you shape the opportunity um, you you identify what it is that you need um, in order to develop as a composer um, so that's really great so you can be very specific about your needs um, the second thing is that you get a mentor and a coach. Um, and that's been really beneficial to me, particularly because I haven't, it's been a while since I've been in higher education. Um, so I haven't really had a mentor figure for some time. So far, um, I've had sessions with um, my mentor, which is Tansy Davis, which is fantastic because she has loads of experience um, writing large-scale works and writing for orchestra and also just again from a creative perspective being able to have someone that you can use as a sounding board um, for ideas and also asking questions about what what my next step should be like prof you know from a musical perspective and also professionally People that aren't musicians often ask, what kind of music do you write? What does it sound like? Um, and I still don't have an adequate um, response for that question. Um, I still, I think I still fumble and I still haven't got the right, the right language. They maybe have a similar, I've had a lot of friends that have had this, a similar experience to like say going to the, the Tate Modern where actually it's something a bit different. It's not what they expected and they quite en enjoy that. It's experimental in a way that um, is something that I think um, young people uh, respond to quite a lot. In in some ways, it's unsatisfactory in order in order to express or encompass the whole gamut of what's going on. And um, particularly if you're working in and around a big city where you've got lots of different musicians working in lots of different um, styles and media. So I think. It, yeah, it may be an inadequate term, but somehow that's also a positive thing. Um, I quite like that kind of multiplicity of style. So rather than complaining about maybe the terminology, it's just sort of appreciating um, the wealth of stuff that's out there. I live in the suburbs of London, so I feel quite spoilt, really. Um, I try and engage with that as much as possible because I feel quite lucky that I have all that that stuff um, 
not necessarily on my doorstep, but a tube journey away. I don't have a problem with the term composer um, because I think if, I mean, there may be other people working in sort of slightly different ways with music that may have, may not be happy with that label, but I've never had a problem with the, the word being called a composer. I, that seems to fit for me. I don't feel like it um, creates particular associations with another, with an older world because I can see plenty of composers doing stuff today that's, that's completely new and exciting and fresh. So it, I have those associations when I hear someone's a composer I I think of that I don't think I don't think historically necessarily so it's not it's not problematic for me at all really think about what it is in your practice that you want to develop um, what are the areas that you feel you need support with um, both professionally and creatively um, because sound and music have the resources to help you with both of those things and that actually is invaluable. Mm -hmm.